Hi. Are we living in the future? Well, it's an interesting question I thought we'd find out because it's 2016 and we don't really have hoverboards. Well, they call them hoverboards, but they really suck. And we don't have flying cars. We don't have dust repellent uh, paper. We don't have anything. So I thought we'd go back to 1986 and check out if we're in the future. What I've got here is a book uh, called Beyond 2000. This actually, as it says here, the book of the TV series. This was an Australian TV series in, actually started in 1981, uh, that was called Beyond Tomorrow, but then they renamed it Beyond 2000 in 85, and this book came out in 86. And I've actually got three of these books here that came out in the later years, book two and then book three. This one came out in 1989. And this TV show was all about what life would be like in the future. You know, would we have a Jetsons type future? And the TV show went through many different types of uh, advanced futuristic technology uh, back then and speculated whether or not we'd be using these in the future and uh, in fields as uh, mixed as aviation, computers, construction, energy, food and agriculture, sports, medicine, society, space, transport, and all sorts of stuff. So I thought we'd take a look at this book that's 30 years old now and see if any of these things have come true or what's happened to them. <laughs> We've got some ancient PCs here, folks. If anything, it's going to be a look at some serious uh, vintage retro tech. So let's get to it. Could be hilarious. Are we living in the future? I don't know. And Beyond 2000 was produced by an Australian company called Beyond Productions. You might be familiar with that name. They're the ones who also produced Mythbusters along with uh, many other uh, shows past and present. And curiously, in Australia, they've just restarted this series and it's called Beyond 2020. But we're going back 30 years and we're going to see if the future has come true. So I'll just uh, go through these, pick out some choice ones from all three of these books uh, from 1986 to 1989 and just show some of the more interesting or amusing ones that have or have not come true. We'll start out with just the first story in the first book here, and it's the Long Ease uh, Do-It-Yourself Plane by uh, Bert Rutan. Who knows that name? And I guess they were uh, looking at the future of do-it-yourself, uh, you know, kit aircraft and stuff like that. And well, yeah, in the future now, 30 years later... Yeah, people are still doing it self own planes and things like that. Not too familiar with the industry, but yeah, it hasn't really taken off. It's not like every man and his dogs are building their own plane these days. And what happened to uh, the Long E's and Burt Rutan? Well, he's still around. He was involved in uh, the Virgin Galactic uh, thing. And um, uh, the uh, his company is now owned by uh, Northrop Grumman. So yeah, um, do-it-yourself planes, meh, still around, but... Nah. Computers, hold on to your hat. <laughs> 1986. I love the bodge wires on this photo. Look at this. That's the one they chose as like, this is the high tech future. These dip packages and classic uh, four layer board with the uh, <laughs> chips in the grids and everything else and some dies that were, you know, ancient processors. Oh, goodness. And we've got an article on Samsung semiconductors. So yes, Samsung went on to be absolutely huge. They're talking about uh, South Korea. They're chipping away at the giants. Um, yeah, that future came true. I mean, you know, the Galaxy Note 7 <laughs> aside, um, who would have thought, you know, battery technology would uh, screw them up in the future. But yeah, they're major, absolute players. So that certainly came true. And they're talking about massive 64K bit uh, DRAMs and uh, 150,000 transistors VLSI dies. Oh man. Yeah, the future. No one predicted, you know, 10 nanometer stuff. For all the technology involved in design and manufacturing computer chips, humans still pr prove to be the most dexterous and adaptable machines for assembling computer circuit boards. Yeah, well, there's nothing in here on uh, the modern uh, surface mount stuff and the pick and place and things like that, which were around back then, but... Yeah, no. Who could have imagined the really advanced uh, PCB technology we've got these days? Absolutely, and packaging technology. Absolutely incredible. 
And we've got Cedric, the No Hands computer, uh, developed by Andrew Downing at the University of Adelaide. It basically allows you to, look at that study piece of technology, allows you to stare at the screen and it detects where your eyes are looking at uh, to, you know, to select things on screen. And well, you know, yeah, we've got that tech these days. You can do that sort of thing, but it never took off. So yeah, that one's a fail. For all our advanced smartphone technology 30 years later, all we can do is swipe. It doesn't detect your eye movement and select stuff on screen. Nah, fingers. Swipey. Next. Did computer animation become big? Well, I don't even have to answer that one. You know the answer to that. Here's um, some early computer animation, the Antics system, and look at that stunning. Stunning animation. Wow. So, yeah, computer animation, it, it dominates everything in, uh, you know, movies and everything else these days. I love this. The computer gives the artist the choice of, for instance, pencil, oil, watercolour, crayon or chalk. You don't even need to be able to draw straight lines or circles. Just mark two points and the computer does the rest. Oh, gold. And we have an article on modems. Computers talk turkey over the phone. Oh, wow. Who even thinks about modem technology these days? Nobody. And in construction and architecture, we've got a story on the Twin Towers and the technology that went into those and the computer simulation and everything else. So for all the engineering involved in this thing, who would have thought that the thing to bring these down was, wasn't was uh, earthquakes or, you know, wind, vibration, all that uh, sort of engineering stuff. It was, uh, yeah, jumbos flying into them. Hmm. And on to energy we go. Wind power? Yep, wind power is huge in the future. Um, I'm not sure how much of the uh, world's uh, energy is produced by wind power now. And what else have we got? The molten salt reflective uh, furnaces that uh, just heat up those salts. And they really, you know, there's a few of them around, I believe, but they really haven't taken on like I thought they uh, would. I thought, you know, that was a brilliant idea at the time, but... Yeah, uh, they haven't really turned into the big deal. And <gasps> amorphous silicon solar cells, will they be the future? You bet. Um, yeah, I don't even need to mention that. Fuel cells, well, no, they're still trying to take off. Uh, wave power, no, still trying to uh, take off on wave power. Uh, I don't think nobody, anyone's done that on a real mass scale. There's been a few pilot projects and things like that. But 30 years later, no, they're still sort of... Uh, you know, tidal power, um, stuff like that. And there's a few um, installations around, but it's not taken the world by storm. And solar towers, where it just sucks the heat up like that, well, nope, I don't believe they've taken off at all. So that's a big fail. And energy conservation in buildings? Well, yeah, um, in fact, it's a law in a lot of, uh, you know, countries and cities around the world to uh, make buildings, you know, environmentally uh, friendly and energy uh, conservative and things like that. So, yep, yeah, we're certainly taking that seriously. On to medicine and a uh, Japanese hospital robot, a bedside robot that uh, helped out patients. Have we got bedside robots 30 years later? Nope. As far as scanning technology goes, uh, CT scanning, uh, PET scanning, N uh, NMR uh, scanning, and we take it for granted these days. So, yep, the future has come true. You know, I just got my uh, knee operated on. I go down to the local uh, clinic and they do an MRI on my knee and Bob's your uncle. Um, so, yeah, definitely uh, scanners have uh, come true and we're all the better for it. Biofeedback. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Love the do. Oh, please. In a science book, we've got acupuncture. Ah, oh, read this last paragraph. Makes you sad. It's possible that it really is just a matter of faith. You think? But those who believe only in hard scientific evidence may simply be followers of a different faith. Hang on while I face palm. Ugh. Just a few years ago, calculators were banned from classrooms. Now we see computers in primary schools. Human beings of the 20th century have a never-ending ability to accept new technology and to incorporate those developments into their lives so that what is fantastic today will be old hat tomorrow. Yeah, check out that old hat technology. <laughs> no one predicted smartphones, of course, or the internet. Smart cards. Yes, the future is here. And yes, we're using smart cards. But 30 years 
after these things were used, I can remember going to uh, the Beyond 2000 uh, show. I don't know if it was be called Beyond 2000, but it was here in Sydney at the um, exhibition center, and you got one of these smart cards, and it was like, oh, wow, futuristic technology. Like, it was the access card. They gave you a smart card to get into the thing, and that was, like, phenomenal. As a kid, I was going, wow, a chip in a card? But yeah, it's really only been the last decade that uh, smart cards have really uh, taken off. Uh, more so in Australia than the US. They were uh, lagging behind, I believe, uh, many countries. But yeah, with modern uh, cryptographic uh, techniques and stuff like that, and online e-commerce and things like that, um, that certainly was uh, spot on. But uh, yeah, nobody thought about online transactions. That was, you know, they talk about uh, doing uh, paying for stuff by phone, but... Uh, yeah, nobody predicted e-commerce on the internet. This is hilarious. The French are in the process of switching the telephone directory over to video text. Instead of printing a new paper directory each year, it would eventually be on a central computer database and everyone with a phone will have a video text terminal that to access this information. <laughs> yep, more talk about video text. <laughs> oh, goodness. A computerized hotel with digital locks and key cards. The trouble with locks is that they're all too easily picked. Well, yeah, so are the modern electronic locks. Who would have thought? I love how they talk about one of these um, electronic tags they put on uh, prisoners and stuff like that. And look at that marvelous through-hole technology there. And I love how down here they talk about 1984 and how Big Brother is watching you on those wearing it. Well, Big Brother's following you everywhere with your damn smartphone. And we do it willingly. The Cebu store, a high-tech shopping complex in Japan. And look at this. We have robots following us around. Well, do we have these in Walmart these days? Or Woolies? Nope. Watch technology in 1986. They're raving about a watch that can store 10 different telephone numbers. Wow, that displays on this tiny liquid crystal screen. Love it. And these uh, electronic copy boards where you write on them, they scan them and then print them out. Yeah, we're still using those. People still use those 30 years later. The Hubble Space Telescope. Yes, it's still working 30 years later. Although they didn't predict the uh, problems with manufacturing the optics on the thing and then have to uh, go up there and service it and put on the corrective uh, lenses. But uh, no, the Hubble uh, Space Telescope certainly changed our view on the universe for the better. Geostar. If Princeton physicist Gerard O'Neill has his way, everyone in the United States will soon be able to contact everyone else, no matter where they are. He plans to achieve this by setting up a global communications network called Geostar. The ultimate in personal communications. Geostar would use satellites to contact anyone, anywhere, with anyone, anywhere else, whether or not they're stranded in the Gobi Desert or driving across Alaska. Personal transceivers would be the size of a large pop pocket calculator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness, yep. Nobody's got a device that, uh, you know, well, we've got GPS, of course, um, but that's receiving. We're not transmitting personally via satellites. That one didn't come through. They just, uh, you know, mobile phone uh, infrastructure took over and never looked back. Computerized joggers. Yep, that um, all that uh, fitness tracking stuff finally came through. You know, 25, uh, 30 years later with the you know, absolute mad craze in uh, fitness tracking technology. So, yeah, that's a win. Video 8 was going to be the technology of the future. The electronic answer to Super 8. Well, yeah, this is just like laughably ancient tech nowadays. And CD players. I've done a teardown of that exact model portable uh, CD player from Sony. And it's, once again, laughably ancient tech. Nobody predicted uh, MP3 um, and, you know, iPods and uh, everything else that would uh, come to fruition. And, yeah, portable colour television. Well, once again, it's just, smartphones killed. so, And the internet killed so much of this tech.
the Novag Chipmate chess computer with a robot arm and the Kurzweil 250 music synthesizer. So yeah, of course, music synthesis um, come a hell of a long way since then, uh, with the exception of auto-tune, of course. Hmm. And digital television. Yes, well, digital television did certainly uh, take over. They eventually uh, switched off analog TV. I've done a video on that when they uh, switched off the analog TV. I've even got right in my lab here behind me some of the original analog tv transmission equipment because they discontinued it but hey it took 25 years to do that but in here there was no talk of like mpeg or anything like that um it just yeah they could not foresee that Auto navigation. Uh, Mercedes Benz were working on tech way back 30 years ago, and yeah, um, uh, nobody predicted the GPS and the uh, and now the move towards our uh, autonomous cars and stuff like that. It's just no, just the act of. Uh, being able to get something to tell you where to go was phenomenal future tech back then. And we've got stuff like the Porsche 959 and uh, plastic engines, airbags. Oh, yeah, um, they were a winner. Every car's got an airbag and pla yeah, plastic engines and all sorts of stuff like that. But no mention at all of electric uh, cars, which, you know, we're now starting to get back into. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that look back 30 years into the past and beyond 2000 and what the future was going to be like. Some hits and some misses. This is only book one. I'll do another video on book two because, uh, yeah, this is like a 20 minute video. So, yep, click here somewhere for the other books to see if anything else came true. Catch you next time.